Well, so basically we are talking about treatment of cancer genes. Laboratory data indicate that antioplasms affect the expression of approximately 100 genes important in any cancer. Additional prescription medications usually work on a single gene, but together with antioplasms, they cover from 150 to 200 genes. The possibility of affecting 200 genes by using antioplasms in combination with the other medications, not a chemotherapy, but gene-targeted medication or immunotherapy, gives the doctors a realistic chance to cure many types of cancer. We are using this principle for over 20 years, uh, treating cancer genes instead of cancer names. And the results were quite remarkable compared to what can be accomplished with standard of care. Uh, we presented the results first time in 2008, and they were well received by the doctors. So, what is the principle of our treatment? We should clear symptoms and sign of cancer. The patient should be free from tumors, symptoms of cancer, and any other laboratory evidence of cancer. That's number one. Number two, we need to destroy cancerous genome. We remove abnormal genes and cure cancer. And these genes were usually acquired during our life. These are not mutated genes which are inherited from parents, with few exceptions. They can be eradicated, which we can prove. Well, the first goal, uh, reducing the signs and symptoms of cancer, reducing the tumor, can be accomplished in some patients through standard treatment. The second goal requires targeted immunotherapy and antineoplastins. When we have the situation in the clinic when the patient who had previously large tumors suddenly has normal scans, we assume that there is no accumulation of cancer cells in the body larger than 0.1 gram by weight. Well, this means that current radiology tests can easily miss approximately 100 million cancer cells. <laughs> the cancer genome which was produced uh, during patient life can be completely destroyed and we can prove it by uh, genomic tests. Patient genomic tests, uh, which are done on blood and tissue, permit us to construct the treatment plan, which typically consists of antioplastins and additional medications. Uh, the treatment is easy to administer. We don't need hospitals, except for perhaps 1% of patients because you don't see bad adverse reactions. It's done outpatient and the results are monitored by standard medical procedures. It is attempted to have answer about the treatment efficacy in one to two months. And we can do it in the majority of patients. We don't want to waste time if the treatment is not working. And once there are no signs, and symptoms of cancer. Uh, and once we have evidence from repeated genomic tests that we don't have any more mutated genes, uh, we would like to continue the treatment perhaps for another uh, three months to make sure that we did not miss anything. Uh, the treatment, uh, uh, after the treatment, uh, the blood test, which uh, tell us about abnormal genes, are extremely sensitive. They're about 100 million more sen times more sensitive than the best scans. They can detect abnormal genes in the amounts of one nanogram per cubic cc of blood, which is one billion part of a gram per cubic cc of blood. If such tests, which initially show a number of mutated genes, become clear as a result of treatment, we are almost assured that the patient is free from cancer. However, uh, it could be that the patient may have these genes present in blood at a lower level, like a trillion parts of a gram per cubic cc of blood. This cannot be detected now because the standard tests are not so sensitive, but hopefully it will be done in the near future. So the treatment can be discontinued when we find that uh, we don't have any more signs, symptoms of cancer and abnormal genes in blood. Easier cases are treated with tablets taken orally of the prescription drug from antioblastin group. For this medication, we obtain already FDA approval as a prescription drug. Terminal cases 
uh, should be treated with intravenous antineoplastins, which were permitted by FDA for phase three clinical trials, which is the last step in the approval process. And uh, this is a little more complex treatment, but still tolerated very well. After this continuation of the treatment, the patients are followed by standard medical examination tests and periodic genomic testing on blood to detect possible recurrence. Initially, we would like to run such tests every three months on blood samples to see if we don't see any <coughs> genes showing up. If some of them are showing up, we still need to take treatment. And as I mentioned before, it doesn't cost anything patients who are in the United States. Uh, this is not done in our laboratory, it's done by the company in LA. But there are some other companies which are moving into this field. If we don't see any recurrence of cancer after five years, we can declare the patient is cured. Well, before we were able to embark on this type of program, uh, we were limited to clinical trials which were permitted by FDA. Currently, we have the results of 13 phase two clinical trials performed in our clinic under FDA supervision in brain tumors and one randomized controlled trial in colon cancer with liver metastasis, uh, which was done by the team of Japanese doctors. This was done independent from us. These clinical trials, which were done only with antioplastins without the other medication because they did not exist at that time, proved the response rate in the range of 12 to 60 percent depend on tumor diagnosis. Response rate is determined by the tumor size. If the tumor is gone, it's a complete response. If the tumor size is decreased more than 50 percent, it's a partial response. And that's what is called objective response. This is usually done by measurement of the tumor size by scans. Well, the response rate is one thing, but what was really important is increase of survival of these patients after not only five years, but after 20 or even 30 years. And we have such patients, which was accomplished first time in medical history for the toughest tumor you can get. And I will show it to you later during this presentation. Uh, after the study of the antioplastins on the entire cancer genome was finished, we realized that the activity on 100 genes is not enough to have good results in many patients. If we add additional medications which work on the genes for which antioplastins don't work, we can dramatically increase the response. Uh, we could start doing this in 1991 when one of the medications from antioplastin group was permitted by FDA as prescription medication, and this one is in tablet form. Commercial genomic tests were not yet available for testing blood in 1999, and the FDA prohibited the use of additional drugs with intravenous antioplastins, but we can use tablets to treat these patients, and we introduced genomic testing on blood in our laboratory. So in 1999, we started such procedures. We began treating patients with oral antioplastins and a few target medications which were available at that time. We published the results in 2008. We reported the response rates from 50 to 60 percent in breast, prostate, head and neck, and unknown primary cancer and non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. We found up to 47 percent response in colon, ovarian, and uterine cancer. The quantum improvement occurred within the last three years when over 100 targeted medications and immunotherapy medications became available. <coughs> and the blood and tissue genomic tests were covered by insurance. The right to try low permitted us to use, uh, for the treatment of terminal cancer patients, intravenous antioplastins. And we are able to correlate genomic data with availability of medications and successfully treat patients with antioplastins and combination of prescription medications. We prove that the hopeless cases of cancer, patients who sometimes have two weeks to four weeks estimated life, can be successfully treated <coughs> by using available drugs which are not cytotoxic chemotherapy. Last year, FDA approval of two drugs based on 
<coughs> this principle to treat genes which are causing cancer indicate the beginning of the paradigm shift in this area. <laughs> Thank you. We reported the results of the treatment of two groups of patients with one of the toughest malignancy, which is glioblastoma. This is the brain tumor, which is usually deadly, which relapsed after surgery, radiation, chemotherapy. The standard of care treatment is powerless to treat such patients. It didn't save the life of Senator Edward Kennedy or Senator McCain, the director of National Cancer Institute died from this tumor and could not be saved, but we saved a number of patients with this tumor. And some of them are now surviving over 20 years in normal life. The response rate to oral antioplasm regimen uh, plus the, the other gene targeted medications was 54%, and on IV regimen was <laughs> really unbelievable 85%. These people usually are dead within six months. But our survival over six months was 86%. Well, <laughs> thank you.